Hey guys, I wanted to hop in real quick before the video starts and remind you that this is the ATA 207 or the Ammo Training Academy 207 series. Now, my mission for this episode was to film a detail from beginning to end with Kevin, Meredith, and myself detailing Meredith's car. And it took about eight hours and we had four cameras. So that's a 32 hour long YouTube video. And I didn't want to torture you guys with watching something like that. So I actually split it up into a couple of different cool nuggets of information where Kevin and I were having a conversation about the car, running into an issue, and then kind of going back and forth and figuring it out. In this episode, we're talking about water spritzing or what we call a supplemental wetting agent. Now, the thought process of most people are, hey, we spray the paint with water, we compound and or polish, and when we do that with the water, it actually dilutes it and sort of makes it kind of, you jewel it or you polish it, that kind of concept. That in fact is false, and Kevin goes over why and when to use the supplemental wetting agent, and it's actually on opposite ends of the spectrum when you're trying to get 100% uh, you know, paint defect, and it's really, really cool. So I hope you guys find this as helpful as I did. Uh, Kevin, tell me a little bit about this water spritzing that you do. Okay, generally we'll water spritz for two reasons. One, to create a drag. Well, it's the re when you water spritz, you create a connection or a drag between the pad and the paint. So I could go ahead and start, I could apply a compound or a polish in abundance, start to polish, and something like a microfiber pad is really good at grabbing and holding onto the abrasives. They're fresh, there's plenty there, but it's locked onto the pad. I can spray water and pull that product right back out of the pad onto the paint surface. So I can reuse that product. So it's actually opposite of what people would think. Hey, I'm spraying water and I'm to dilute it. No, you're not. And, and, and what's interesting too is, you know, in, in the old way of thinking is that people will tell you, hey, you need to polish until the abrasives break down in the old way, to, yeah, in yeah. the diminishing abrasives. Sure. And how do I know that? How do I know to polish until, how do I know that I polish and the abrasives have broken down? Well, it'll look oily and the surface will become clear. Right. In, in, in a way it's saying you will be able to know that the big abrasives have broken down so fine now that you can see through them or they're not blocking. Right. Really, that's, that, that doesn't, that's not sensible and the way you prove that out is simply take a bottle of water, spray, go across and wow, all the, all the broken down abrasive is right back on the surface. So it's not breaking down and the oiliness is not indicating that the, the particles are so fine you can see through them. It's an emulsion break. The emulsion is all of the different liquid ingredients, all of the hard particle ingredients have separated. Mm. So some of it has gone into the pad, some of the things have evaporated, some things have dusted away, right? So by spritzing it, it releases what's in the pad back on. Right. So. You start out with an emulsion, you know, it looks creamy. You got the, let's say, oil, water, solvents, abrasives, buffering agents, things that help th keep things connected or from dusting away. All these things are mixed together and it looks kind of like mayonnaise consistency or milky and it's white. And as you polish, the polishing action breaks everything apart. Now we still have the same exact ingredients, but they're not combined together anymore. They've been broken apart. Abrasives here, water here, solvents here, right? It's an emulsion break. Mm. I polish, I polish, it goes clear. I know from experience that the abrasive is just fine. It's just stuck to the pad. I grab my water, I spritz, pull that, those remnants out of the pad. It doesn't, it doesn't reinvigorate and make an emulsion again. It just takes what's in the pad, off of the pad, onto the surface. And it can affect the cut. It can increase the cut. Which is totally counter Intuitive. Right, it can increase the cut, um, which can also increase scouring. It can change the, the um, characteristics of a pad, as an example. If you're using a rotary polisher and you have long wool strings and you water spritz, mm -hmm. every time you water spritz, depending on the wool, if it's cotton or it's nylon or polyester or, or wool, <laughs> wool mm -hmm. uh, they have different absorbency rates. So if you get a wool pad a wool or a string pad that has a lot of absorbency when it gets wet and you're spinning it at a high speed the fibers start to get wet and then they stretch and they pack tighter and tighter and tighter and more compacted now what was once a soft fluffy contour contourable pad mm. becomes condensed and dense and tight and that thing will just level yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll it'll hop yeah if it's loaded up, but it can also really level. So plus is that they can really level if that's what you want and cut rapidly, 
the drawback is going to leave a lot of string marks possibly and chatter and hop and bounce. So there's always a plus and a minus. Yeah, water spritzing is really good for a lot of things, but a lot of times it's being used improperly and someone thinks, well, I'll just add water and it'll take the haze away because I heard that on the internet. I, I read your articles. It's like, well, you didn't dice, decipher what I was saying because it will cause scouring in that situation. The other reason you would water spritz is that you are using such a small quantity of liquid. Let's say a polish. Let's say I'm working on the most sensitive haze prone paint. Mm -hmm. And I've found out that by using too much polish, it's giving me too much cut. Mm -hmm. So I really just want the, the liquid emulsion of the polish, not the, the abrasive. Because yeah. I, want, I want the pad to slip and not bite, right? I called you years ago when I was doing right. a pour show. Yeah. I basically went from a percentage down basically to water. Right. right. I just started polishing right. with water. So there's times if you happen to use such a diminutive size of, of polish, I mean, we're talking just the tiniest droplet, and we're, we're, we're preaching single one-way passes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's, that's that is never going to transfer across the entirety of this pad mm -hmm. in one single one-way pass, right. right? So obviously we don't do that very often. We do sometimes use that quantity or way less in some water and shake it up and we're spritzing. Yeah, but if if we were using just you know just I'd say hey just you, you know the the proverbial pea-sized drop, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cut that in a quarter a fourth of a piece size drop and take that quantity and put some at 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 4, 6, 8, 10 at the outer edge of the pad because we're going to do one pass and we have no time for that stuff to migrate outward, right? right. I want you to water spritz because, or, or spritz the pad because that's going to help spread that in that singular one-way pass. So on one hand, we use water spritzing when you have an abundance of abrasive in your pad to pull it back out or to tighten strings up. On the other hand, the other extreme, we use it because we're going to be short cycling with a dimin diminutive amount of polish and we need it to spread rapidly. It's interesting. Yeah, that is, that is huge. But th there are two entirely different reasons to do that. So if you happen to be chasing your tail final polishing, but you're using a regular quantity of polish and then you water spritz, you've just ramped up the cut. You've just changed the characteristics of the polish as it was designed to work. Right. You've just changed, you made it, made it worse. So don't water spritz as an automatic. Use it, you, you should be using it when you know why you're using it. Don't just assume that's just a normal thing that you do. Mm -hmm. Know why you're doing it because it's not a normal thing. You don't normally have to do that. Right. The, the liquids we're using, the pads we're using, the systems we're using, they're designed to do certain things. And you are really changing what they were designed to do by introducing a water spritz. Right. So I'm not, it seems like I'm the guy that says, don't do anything that's orthodox. No, I'm saying do everything orth orthodox, but consider these things that we've found out. When the paint is not playing normal, right. when the paint's really mm -hmm. soft, or when yeah. there's something weird, when the paint's telling you something funky yeah. that doesn't work. Do what the system says to do first. Right. If it's not working for you, let's make small incremental adjustments and go to, the, if you have to go to the extremes, we, we have that, that available. Yeah, we know lots that. and lots of liquid, the little liquid, water, there's yep. all these little variants that right. you can use. Yep. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. All right. Back to work. Yep, back to work. Where was I?